Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. In the previous video I ended by wondering what to do about these Mars probes which had lost contact and I think I'm just gonna abandon them frankly. We had three critical missions that we needed to do that would cost us dearly if we failed. We had the Venus landing mission, we had the Moon crewed landing mission, and then these, uh, the landing missions on Mars. And, well, failing one out of the three is not too bad. So, I think we'll just leave this be. We can't really decouple it. We can't do anything because we don't have communication. I could cheat, but I think this was just legitimately a little bit messed up. I think, uh, perhaps I assumed that we would be able to relay the stuff from here. Of course, it does have the relay, little relay dishes, but we might be just too far away at this point. I thought we would be closer to Earth. Uh, then straight across the solar system from Earth. Uh, this is the worst case scenario kind of thing as far as our lines being stretched. So I think, yeah, this was just badly calculated. We also have a new antenna. I added a new antenna to the small rockets pack. And uh, so if you download the small rockets pack, you'll have a new better dish that replaces this one. And that might be better for this kind of mission. Let's go to the tech tree and take a look at that. So I think we're just going to skip these Mars missions and assume that they were flawed and move on. Because we do have plenty of other things. We might as well send some more and also send some uh, relay probes. We actually have missions to position satellites in orbits around Mars. So we can take advantage of those and Deimos and Phobos. Yes, we have this interplanetary com dish alpha, and this has uh, 316 gigameters, uh, 316 million kilometers in uh, DSN level two, uh, compared to this one's only 22.4, and so that'll be under space exploration, which I guess we should unlock then. Uh, that will also get us these station parts. And that's important for another reason. I've made another change to the RP2000 um, contract system. Minor change, but it seemed important. And that change is, first of all, that the crewed Mars flyby and crewed Venus flyby missions don't require... They originally required the repeatable uh, crewed moon mission. But that doesn't seem to pop up. I have the contract in there, but no matter what I seem to do to fix the contract, it doesn't show up here. And it, it, the limit here for how many human contracts we can have is four. So that's okay. But for some reason, it just doesn't show up. So I didn't under, I don't know how to fix that. So these were relying on that crude moon landing repeatable contract, like this human orbital repeatable contract. And I've changed that so that they just rely on this crude lunar landing contract instead, the one that we've already done. So that is one change. Another change is the first space station. Uh, it used to require short-term habitation. Now it just requires advanced exploration and then also advanced flight control and astronaut complex, but those we've already met. But if we take a look at the tech tree, uh, where short-term habitation is, is somewhere out here. Uh, there it is. It's uh, 550 science technology, which means we would have to get the final unlock for the R&D building in order to get to stations. And the R&D building final unlock is 4 million. Uh, so the thing is, with startup companies, you know, because we are playing a startup in the year 2000, there are startup companies that are already trying to make space station modules, like there was the Bigelow module on the ISS and everything. So I don't think we should have to wait that long to build a station module. Uh, on the logic that, well, real companies like Axiom and all are doing that right now, even though they might not have all of this stuff necessarily lined up. So, yeah. And, of course, I also had placed the station modules already in space exploration, so I'm requiring advanced exploration, which is here instead. And in order so that we can do the station contract, I'm going to pick this up right now. It'll also give us ladders. So, well, it's about time. So, we'll have those unlocking. We don't have them unlocked right now. I might want to just get miniaturization for completeness, but really we don't need too much in there right now. The small RCS boards might be nice for probes, though. So, it's a thought. But I'll save the rest of our science for uh, when we find out what we really need. 
instead of just unlocking things in order or something. So, as far as contracts are concerned, what we have active are two position of satellite in specific orbits of the moons of Mars and one around Mars itself. All those should be relay satellites that will help our future uncrewed landing mission. So, that's probably one thing we can do, but if we take a look at when the next opportunity is, it's 379 days. You know, we probably should get on with that, because by the time we build the missions, uh, considering we're sending a bunch, it'll be about time for the window. Uh, it's unfortunate that the uncrewed Mars landing contract will fail right before that, but... Uh, so, again, we have 3 million, but we've got 1.5 million tied up in that, so we'll lose that. These have a very nice completion reward. Well, okay, the Deimos one has a nice completion reward. We must, we must remember to uh, fulfill that as a priority. The Phobos one isn't so good, and the Mars one isn't so good. Deimos, for some reason, is special. So, oh, it's because we have to hold a stationary orbit, maybe? Yeah, it's got the additional stationary orbit around this area thing, which, admittedly, it's going to be tough, because... It's tough to get any sort of stationary orbit around Phobos. Oh, sorry, Deimos. So maybe we want those little thrusters, because those little thrusters are four Newton thrusters. They are miniature. They definitely belong in miniaturization. But they'll allow much more fine control than the other thrusters will. Is that a good reason? I don't know. They have hydrazine by default, and then these other options too. Millinewtons, even. Hmm. It actually says 4 newton, but that's based on MMH and NTO. It's only 2.1 newtons with hydrazine. Um, alright. Uh, well, let's see. What else do we have here? Better landing legs. Well, we saw that might be a thing for the moon, right? No, so we really want that for future moon landing missions. The plain parts we really don't need. These we really don't need. Fuel lines, maybe, but... Um, there's a hypergolic engine here, and then two nice small methane engines. Heavy rocketry, I need to put something in. <laughs> uh, we seem to be lacking stuff in heavier rocketry here. wonder what I should... I mean... We've got our two biggest shear strut engine engines in here already with heavy rocketry, so heavier rocketry I don't know what to put in. Well, it's not like the technology will unlock very quickly though. But I'll get the miniaturization. And... Yeah, we'll hold off on the first space station. That'll be what we do next. We're gonna prep our replacement Mars missions. We're gonna get that Mars thing done. I, I trust that this uncrewed Mars landing, I think it's one of the standard RP-2000 contracts, so we should get it back after we fail. There's also uncrewed Deimos landing. After we get the the satellite into orbit around Deimos and fulfill that, we could probably go straight into a landing, but we'll have to remember... Well, uh, it's only 730 days, I hate that. Um, I'll think about that. Okay, so let me cook up some new Mars Relay probes, and we'll see how that all works. Since we need these technologies, I'm going to spend some upgrade points for R&D here. We're at 0.8 right now. 112. I'd like to get... Well, these, these two being done in time for that window is the most important thing. That gives us enough time, I think, to build the rockets as well. So we'll go with this. But before we can complete that technology, it is time to check up on Jupiter-1. So let's jump to that and see if it has a communication line. I doubt it, but, you know, if it does, that'll be interesting. And nope, 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 too far. Okay, well, there is Jupiter and its planet, I mean, moons. If you can see there, Io, Ganymede, and probably Europa there too. Well, if we were trying to take a look at the pole, it wouldn't be too bad. Anyway, there is Jupiter. We are flying around. But we're not going to get any credit for it. It was close enough for a flyby mission and everything. And 
and off we go. Whoa. I don't know whether this is gonna go in interplanetary space, I mean interstellar space or not. Um, no, it goes into a high orbit though. Almost. Almost out of the solar system, but not quite. Definitely way past Pluto after this. That is a long orbit. 500 years, I guess, just about. 500 years to apoapsis, so that's a 1,000 year orbit. Okay, so here's the Mars sat. We'll probably have something more complicated for Phobos and Deimos. And what we have here is the new dish, the interplanetary com dish alpha that I made. And again, that's not a relay. So we also have a whole bunch of these CubeSat relay antennae. I don't know if they'll all combine to turn out enough range to communicate back, to relay something back, but we'll give it a go. I've put as many as I thought I could fit. And of course we have solar panels. They should provide more than enough power, hopefully. Uh, I think if we angle right, it should be more than that. Okay, now it's saying 67 watts. Is it sure about that? I have no idea. Anyway, uh, so yeah, they should provide more than enough power, especially because we are using the modern control core instead of the early controllable core. I've added this to the small rockets pack as well. And so it is physically a bit smaller and lighter. It's like with uh, more modern uh, control unit, Moog Avionics and Arduino and it takes 50 watts. So just one of these panels should be able to do it. Maybe not when Mars is at its uh, high point above the sun, but anyway, we have four panels. We should be able to make it work out. And we do have the internal antenna, but that's probably not got enough range for anything useful. And we also have a goo container. This is a goo container, this biology experiment. Actually what it is, is a bunch of plants and some batteries and a detector there. Uh, but we're it's coded as a goo container, so that's just goo. And so we are bringing goo over. I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but we might as well. We've got some of the other science as well. And otherwise, this is very similar to the previous Mars sat that we've sent, but with a lot of different things. So anyway, this should work out for us, but I've been hopefully a little bit conservative. I've decided to go with a two-engine rocket on this. I've called this version Buster instead of just the one-engine version. And so that will probably give us a better chance at completing the transfer with this upper stage so that all the Delta V in the probe can be used to get into the correct orbit. So that's we're looking at 3520 to get into the correct orbit around Mars and hopefully that'll work, but it is a weird orbit. It's mostly polar and it's very high up, 25,000 kilometers. So we will see. It doesn't take very long to build. So if we wanted to build something even heavier, we could. I just don't know exactly how much we'll need to do the job, but we will build this. So that's one and I'm going to turn to I think I'll wait until we get miniaturization before trying to build the other two, the Phobos and Deimos ones. I want those tiny little thrusters to help with those. And so the... I don't know why it doesn't show miniaturization there, but we've, I'll just time up to 74 days. And since this rocket only takes 17 days to build, I'm sure we can make sure that we get the rockets built in time for the window. So we will do that. So here's the modification for Phobos and Deimos. In this case, especially for Deimos, we have to get into a very particular orbit and I don't want to be lugging everything around for that. So instead we have a little decoupler here and a separate stage that has the four Newton thrusters that we just unlocked and a tiny tank of 11 liters of hydrazine. And so the goal here is this will still get into orbit around Phobos and Deimos. It just, it's just that we want to use just this portion up here to fine-tune our orbit to meet the contract goals and also maybe to land on the surface. We are still carrying the pseudo-goo container on here as well as the science. Uh, the pseudo-goo container is hopefully clickable somewhere down there. It's right under the antenna. I might have to action group that, but uh, can we see the plants? Uh, there's the plants. I'll be able to get to them somehow. There we go, biology experiment. So we've got that 
And we've got two control cores. We've got one up here and one down here. We've got basically double the solar panels. And we've staggered them and flipped these around so that we can just constantly get... Because these solar panels don't rotate, I want to have redundancy with that. And of course, this part has to be independent. We've got an extra battery here. So we're make, taking more advantage of the launcher since I've added the extra engine. And hopefully this will work out for us, but we'll have to see. 3,105 meters per second. Uh, I'm tempted to do uh, one with larger boosters as well. So that's 19 days. I did unlock uh, a new part that I added to the small rockets pack. Um, or this might be the sure start engine pack, sorry. The SM16 solid motor, which uh, mimics a uh, Gem 63, I believe. And, uh, I mean, in terms of stats, not looks. Uh, but the problem is it's really big. So it's actually fairly expensive, too. Let's see. Let me just sort of put it on the side here. So it goes from 19 days uh, to 31 days. I guess it's not too bad. Um... The thrust weight ratio, if we light the core engines at the same time, is going to be interesting, but I guess that's okay. All right, uh, so we'll put those on decouplers. Decouplers are going to cost extra, too, and I'll prefer these, actually. And we will see. That'll give us even more margin, just in case it happens to be a bad Mars window. It looks a bit excessive. And that thrust to weight ratio is super. I might want to add fins, I'm not sure. Maybe we should lengthen this. This this is getting to be a bit extra. Two hundred tons. I basically doubled the mass just there. So um Buster two. Buster Keaton. Um Yeah, well it's worth it maybe. Uh, let's add some MLI layers to this. Maybe we can have it hang around. Well, we have the time, so yeah, let's just add the extra margin, and why don't we also, while we're at it, make this one have more fuel. We're just throwing money at this, really. 34 minute burn time. Well, redundant engine, or engines. Let's have, uh, let's have three. Okay, I've made the adjustments that take better advantage of the launcher with the boosters. I'm not too sure I'm doing it perfectly, but we're basically trying to send one ton over to Mars here. And we will pack that in. And see how that works. We'll build a couple of these. And maybe we'll want to build a new lander mission to go with all this. If it turns out I can pick up that contract again, so we'll see. Okay. Here we go, build, and build another one, though the second one will probably be called Phobos Sat. Okay, we've built the three Mars Sats, but we've also failed the uncrewed Mars landing contract, so we lost the 1.7 million. And the question is whether I can pick that up again, or if I want to pick up that again, I don't know. Uh, well, we can. But then we risk another 1.5 million. Maybe we should wait. Maybe we should try it out without actually picking up the contract just to verify that it all works out this time. So, but we have time before the window to build it. So I will. We just want to replace the antenna that turned out not to have enough range last time with one that does. So here, once again, this parabolic antenna only had 22.4 gigameters. This new interplanetary dish has like 10 times that amount, but is not a relay. So that is the replacement that we're going to do. They have about the same mass. So we're just going to see whether this would have worked in that case. And yep, 
I don't know about these little relay antennae. I don't think there there are enough of them to do anything, but we'll keep them on just for the heck of it. Only 26 days in this case. This actually has liquid boosters. Uh, it's only 100 tons. Um, should work out, because we had the missions work out last time. Uh, <laughs> I hope. Okay, Mars Surface Probe 2, we'll say. And I think we have time to build two of these, just so that we have backup. Because we have... Whoop, we have 57 days into the window, and it takes 26 days, so... We will build two. Okay, so here we are with our first launch, and it will be a Mars Surface Probe, since I've built two of those. We have redundancy, and we have plenty of margin before the window, though. Whether that's the actual window timing, I don't know, because we don't have Transfer Window Planner in here. I'm trying to keep things simple, and, you know, just using Curve Alarm Clock to figure out the windows is the simple way to go. We've lined up with the moon, because that's how I normally judge the ecliptic, since I still don't think that there's an easy way to figure out when we're in line with the plane of the ecliptic, so this should do the trick. And ignition. Of course, our engines are still subject to failures, potentially, so each launch will still be interesting. We'll have to... we can't take it for granted, but I'll try and uh, do the launches or edit the launches down to as brief as possible so it's not too tedious. Okay, and booster set. And the roll that we always get from those boosters, I still haven't fixed that yet. Okay, separation and ignition. And fairing set. Fairing set. RCS to stop the roll. Close to orbit, we can see possible signs of sunrise up ahead. And shut down. All right, we are in orbit with 1,400 left in this stage and plenty more in the next stage. So let's see if we can get over to Mars. Let's see, ASAP. Yeah, yeah, we're fine. Uh, though the transit duration is 312 days. So next time we are definitely going to be doing space station stuff. We'll have advanced exploration complete and we'll try and put together that first space station contract. Of course, we've already launched a first space station before, but we didn't get to do the official milestone contract yet, so we'll want to do that. All right, so we have our transfer. We'll take the fact that it's got to take uh, 300 or so days. I mean, if that's how it is, that's how it is. That's probably more due to relative inclination than anything else. That's Venus rising there. All right, let's proceed. Okay, and ignition. And... Separation. And ignition. Let's see how this turns out. And... Oh, uh, well, there it is. Uh... Looks like our timing's a bit off. Okay, but we've got an encounter. Let me just add a mid-course adjustment for that, and we'll be on to the second one. We can see the orbit that the Mars orbit sat is going to have to get into. Um, if with this timing, it seems like it's not going to be too hard to get into that. This launch certainly could have. I mean, uh, for instance, like this, right? This is nearly in line. Just like that. If, on the other hand, our opportunity had us coming in perpendicular, that would have been much worse. But this time, it looks like this timing is not too bad for that particular orbit. All right, we will go with that as the mid-course adjustment. And that's in. So, let's make sure this is doing the right thing by the sun. Okay, and setting persistent rotation. Seems okay to me. I'll keep it on smart ASS rather than use SAS. But it's all ready to go, so let's go on to the next launch.
Next up is one of the Phobos or Deimos missions. Uh, I haven't decided which moon it is going to go to, but it has the big boosters, and those do not gimbal. Oh, they it says it has a gimbal in it. Maybe do do gimbal. <laughs> I take it back. I, I don't remember putting gimbal on it, but all right, maybe they do gimbal. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, I'm worried about their enormous thrust and the fact that we are going to have a high thrust to weight ratio, but. Let's find out how it's going to go. Throw up SAS on and ignition and launch. Actually, uh, the boosters should have been at the same time as the launch clamps. But Okay, well, we better turn quickly. Alright, seems to work. I don't know if it's actually a benefit to use these solids over the liquid boosters, but the liquid boosters with the same engines we've got on the core there, the SC2060s. Uh, Price-wise, I mainly mean. Of course, efficiency-wise, it's not. Ooh, that's a little bit tight. Okay, getting to high G-forces here with this stage. And separation and ignition. And fairing set. Okay. We have our vast array of these relay antennae out. 24 of them. <laughs> okay, shut down. We are in orbit, though. The periaps is sort of just barely, but we had so much power in the boosters in first stage that it was a little bit difficult to control the orbit, but we've got it. And we've got lots of Delta V here. I don't know what we're going to be able to use out of it, but we certainly won't need the probe in order to... Uh, make our transfer. We're not, we're not going to use any of its fuel. That will all be for getting into orbit around Mars and then Phobos or Deimos. So, as the sun rises, let me do the plotting. It's the same sort of deal as we had with the previous mission. Uh, same long duration, same burn point, no problems. Okay, selling the fuel down. And ignition. And we have a good ignition. Since we're doing it all with this engine, it's probably going to be more e uh, more correct, more accurate a burn. Because we're not relying on a longer burning engine and deviating away from the maneuver node, but we'll see. Okay, but it's such a quick burning engine that am I going to be able to catch it? Oop, ah, it went there. It went there. I saw it for a brief, the briefest moment. Okay, let's go retrograde and use the RCS to maybe bring it back there. Still got 1,300 on this stage, but I don't know if it's gonna hang out with us. Uh, it all depends on the boil off. We did put the MLI layers on. It doesn't have much heat penetration right now. We'll see. Up oh, there it is. Overall, that certainly will need less of a mid-course adjustment than the other one. We want to get in line with Phobos and Deimos. Okay, that seems like a good situation right there and only 3.9 meters per second on the correction. We add that alarm, though just turning to face the sun is going to probably mess with that. Okay, this one seems ready to go. So next we will do the Mars set, just to mix things up. And then we'll go back and do the next day most set. And maybe we'll hold the second Mars surface probe in reserve until we find out whether, but what's wrong with the one that we've got going over there. I think that'll be best. I don't see any reason to send both in this case, as long as the other one's on its transfer and then lose an engine, basically. So, yep, that is what we're going to do. So the Mars sat next. Okay, so this is the simplest one of the lot, no extra boosters or anything. It doesn't have that much electric charge, but we're not expecting it to do much either. It just needs to get into that funny orbit so that we fill that contract. So, uh, let us just go with it. We are lined up, SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition. And launch. Okay. 
This stage is just about to run out here. Nearly 10 G's and separation and ignition. Oh, and fairings. <laughs> Bonus fairings. We've got those re uh, relay antennae out. I'll wait until we are in space for the solar panels. Okay, and shut down. No crazy surprises there. This stage should handle the transfer burn as well. So no problems. Let us get that set up. Turns out like all of our burns are at night, so we never get a good chance to look at these things. Launch is at night, transfers at night. I don't know how that happens, but normally it's like one of them is in daylight, but no, not this time. Okay, go. Okay, I'm just gonna take it from here, because, well, its thrust was such that an accurate shutdown was not gonna work out anyway. Well, uh, let's see. Yep. Okay, well, probably overdid it. Retrograde. Not much left in this stage. We might be better off just moving on to the next one. We need to get into that orbit, so that's a little bit closer. But we'll probably have to do the rest on the mid-course adjustment, so let's finagle that. So I want to make sure that all the adjustment burns happen close to the same time, but not exactly the same time. Within a few days. Speaking of which, we might as well use this to check out what the manual capture is going to cost us. Okay, so let's see, we create a node at that periapsis. Bring it into a loose orbit first. That didn't seem to take much. Only 800. Uh, so we could bring it down to that level. Probably needs some inclination adjustment, but bring it down. Yeah, it's a little bit off, but that's going to cost 900 only. And then we'll boost up up here after doing some sort of inclination correction. And that'll cost, let's say, 700. So we have it, though. We have it with plenty to spare, and that's true of our other probes as well. So this is looking good so far. It's really about... Engine ignitions and comms, as far as I can tell. But we've got that one ready to go. It's pointing at the sun, though the sun is not appearing just yet. Okay. So there's recharging. I'm keeping the stage with it for now. Mainly because it's got the RCS, and probably that RCS is good enough to do this mid-course adjustment anyway. So, the final launch for this episode and for this Mars window will be the other... Deimos slash Phobos sat and possible lander and that is what we're going to go to next. Okay here we go for our last launch for Mars for this window and throttle up and SAS on and actually let's move the boosters up. I should have used the booster icon when I made those. I just copied the engine icon accidentally there. Anyway, ignition and launch. Might have also been able to get away with just one of the engines on the core, but I guess redundancy is good. So, people planning Mars missions, uh, the 2026 window looks pretty good. Might want to make use of it. Okay, booster set. Uh, 
uh, we've definitely got way too much time to wap waps us this time. Okay, maybe we'll delay ignition this time. Uh, separation. And let's do fairings. And we'll just coast a little bit. Well, still very stable. Selling fuel down, bottle up, and stage. All right. Okay, this one is in orbit and ready to go. So let us plot it. Nothing very much different here. A little bit less delta V uh, takes, and I think it'll arrive first. That's usually the pattern. The last to leave is the first to arrive. Okay, ignition. A little bit late there. Okay, waiting for our resulting orbit to appear. This one was actually automatically very good for uh, the Mars satellite contract. Even though I, I'm not trying to do that with this. But anyway, we went too far by about 18 meters per second. So it is RCS time. Our inclination is just perfectly in line with Mars. This really is... The 2026 opportunity is good, folks. Seriously. Uh, you can see the descending node there. It is right at the transfer window point. So it is just optimal for transferring stuff to Mars. Do something with it. That doesn't seem too bad right there. Okay, we will take that. Oh, uh, that node is a little bit later than I wanted, but we'll keep it. It's fine. And we have our recharge. Okay, so there we have it. Four probes for Mars to make up for the two that we uh, failed on. Uh, we will try and complete three different contracts, though not actually the one that has us landing on Mars, but at least we have a few things to do. But next time I'm going to try and tackle the first space station contract since we'll have advanced exploration complete. We will be finally be able to pick that up. And uh, advanced exploration and its predecessor in the tech tree both had the nice little ISS modules that I made for the crew vessel pack. Uh, so we will see if we can put those to use. So anyway, with that plan, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.